Hello everyone, the 36th China Mathematical Olympiad was held recently on 24th and 25th of November. This Olympiad is well known for its difficulty and also China has been performing strongly at the IMO and as such I think we are all uh, excited to see what are some of the problems they have in their own National Olympiad. So without further ado, let's take a look at problem 1. So for problem 1, we have the following question. Let Zn be a sequence of complex numbers whose odd terms are real and even terms are purely imaginary. Also given that absolute value of zk zk plus 1 equals 2 to the power of k for every positive integer k. We define fn to be absolute value of z1 plus dot 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 plus zn. So for part a we are going to find the minimum possible value of f2020. Now before going further into the question, I'm going to introduce some simplifying notation. So for the odd terms, I'm going to let a n be uh, z n itself. But for the even terms, I'm going to write z n as i times a n. And the purpose is so that I can have the terms a n to be always real. Okay, and now if we look at uh, this condition given here, comparing two successive terms will allow us to conclude that a k plus 2 is equal to plus or minus 2 times of a k. And we are free to choose this uh, plus or minus. No matter what we choose, the conditions of the question will always be held. And so now we can proceed to compute what is f2020. We will compute the square of that because it's always easier to compute square of absolute value. Uh, and we see that the square of f2020 is the real part square plus imaginary part square. Now using the observation, we can, I'm going to pull out the absolute value of a1. So this is plus or minus 1, then this is plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, and so on until plus or minus 2 to the power 1009. And as before, we are free to choose any, any of these plus or minus signs while, while, uh, while guaranteed that the conditions, of the, uh, question, the conditions of the question will continue to remain true. Similarly, for the imaginary part, I'm going to have a string of plus or minus powers of 2. And to achieve the minimum possible value, we are going to choose signs such that this term is equal to 1. And we can Firstly, we see that this is possible because, for example, just take uh, all the signs to be plus and set the last sign to be minus. Uh, or all the signs to be minus and the last sign to be plus. Secondly, we see that this is the minimum possible choice because this expression must be an odd number, so it's not possible to get zero. Therefore, we conclude that this uh, whole expression here is lower bounded by a1 squared plus a2 squared. Now we can use your favorite inequality, uh, for example, AMGM, uh, to conclude that this thing is greater than or equal to twice of this. And we are given that this thing is equal to 4, which is the condition here. Therefore, we conclude that f of 2020 is greater than or equal to 2. Right now, let us move on to part B. So part B is to find the minimum possible value of f200 times f2021. So same as before, I can write the f squared as real part squared plus imaginary part squared. And I'm going to pull out the absolute value of a1 and absolute value of a2 and end up with the string of plus and minuses. Just as in part A, I can choose the sign such that this term is equal to 1. However, for the real term, we need to be slightly more careful because if we, let's say, choose the sign such that this is equal to 1, then we have, in the bottom, we have 1 plus or minus 2 to the power 1, 0, 1, 0, and we cannot make that equal to 1. So the moral of the story is basically we cannot choose the sign simultaneously such that both terms are equal to 1. So this is uh, where we need to do a bit more work. We do not know what is the optimal choice of the plus or minuses, but never mind, let's say that uh, we chose plus or minus sign somehow and end up with a value of omega here. Then what is the, the expression here? The expression here is actually omega plus or minus to the power 1010. Uh, without loss of generality, I'm going to choose this to be a plus because I can always flip the sign of everything, flip the sign of omega, and omega squared will still be the same value. So I'm going to uh, simplify the notation by just choosing plus uh, the plus term here. 
And now if we compute the product, uh, we can do it directly. We have the product of the two uh, left terms being a14 omega square omega plus 2 to the power of 1010 square. And the product of the right terms being a2 to the power of 4. And now we have the cross terms. Uh, recall that a1 squared times a2 squared is 4. So the cross term is 4 times omega square. We have the other cross term, which is 4 times omega plus 2 to the power 1010 square. And now what do we do? Well, we see that we can apply AMGM to this term. And the, the reason for doing that is we will get rid of the A1, A2 dependence. Well, because AMGM says that the average of this uh, is greater than or equal to the square root of the product, right? So I move the divider by 2 over to this side, and then I have the square root of the product. A1 to the power 4 times A2 to the power 4 is 2 to the power 4, which is 16. Then I have these terms here. Computing the square root, I have uh, the, the expression here. And now we see that the the remaining terms can be nicely written as a square. So regardless of what omega is, uh, the choice by, by fiddling around with a, the absolute value of a1, absolute value of a2, I can always write this product greater than or equal to this. So now this is the opportune moment for us to choose what is the optimal omega. To do this, I have a little graphic. Uh, so the cross here indicates zero. And we see that if omega is negative, then omega is on the left here, right? And then when we add 2 to the power 1, 0, 1, 0, we end up with something on, on the other side of 0. Then the absolute value of omega plus absolute value of this thing is exactly the distance between the two blue dots, which is 2 to the power 1, 0, 1, 0. Of, and of course, if omega is positive, then uh, this quantity is even larger. You have like omega, then you have yet another 2 to the power 1, 0, 1, 0 to the right, and we add all the distances up, it is even bigger. So we can see that this inequality is actually greater than or equal to 2 to the power 1, 0, 1, 0 with equality as long as omega is negative. So we don't have to worry too much, we just need to make omega negative. We will get saturate this inequality, and so the final answer is 2 to the power 2, 0, 2, 2, and of course we must remember to take, take the square root. So we end up with uh, the required answer here 2 to the power of 1011. So what do you think of this problem one? Well certainly it is a bit more sophisticated than what we might expect of an uh, average problem one but I wouldn't say it's uh, incredibly difficult uh, because uh, I think each of the steps are quite logical and then the things about choosing sign is something that choosing the sign side that is equal to 1 is something that is tractable and once we have reached uh, this expression here, even if you are, are quite weak in inequality, you can actually use uh, calculus to finish off the problems. So nothing too complicated, but certainly it's not a trivial problem. And in the next video, we will continue on to look at problem two, which is a very uh, interesting problem. So stay tuned and see you soon.